Hey, what up? What up? Welcome. Welcome. You know, they say like they say, y'all could be anywhere in the world, but y'all here with me. I don't know if it's one of y'all. I don't know if it's none of y'all. I don't know if it's a hundred of y'all because I have taken views off of my own screen. So welcome. 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 So happy for you to come and join and try a new thing with me as I'm doing this virtual live listening party. Very, very happy that you have chosen to number one, listen to the album where this is your first time or you're doing it for the 10th time. Uh, number two, coming to humor me and hang out. So um, please feel free to engage or feel free to unplug or do whatever you like. As I've said before, uh, this Protect the Queen album is just 27 minutes of your time. What I'm going to do tonight is play those tracks and also talk to them. So this is set up for eight to nine. That's probably the time that we'll be spending together. Um, but I will get into it. For those of you who don't know, I don't know how you found me if you don't know me, uh, but my name is Opal Elisa. I am a spoken word artist. I will be sharing a spoken word album with you. My recent one that just dropped uh, last Friday, a week ago called Protect the Queen. I'm also an MC. My roots are in hip hop. My roots are really in battle rap. Um, so I, I take pride in my, my lyrics and my lines and I'm an artist. So I'm sensitive about my stuff, but I also love to hear what stuff resonates with people. I also love fellow artists. I consider myself an MC's MC and I love MC's MC's. So I'm also a poet's poet. So for those of you who also write, because I find that people who love poetry and spoken word usually have the talent themselves too. I uh, love to connect and continue kind of vibing and let me know kind of what lines resonate with you. So I will get into the album. And before I do, I just want to talk a little bit about, you know, why, why now, why I call to protect the queen, what I've done before and what has led me uh, to get to, to this point where I'm at. And, you know, honestly, none of us know, but also let me share a little bit about where I'm trying to go. I'm not someone who's shy about my dreams either. Uh, so the reason that I called it, um, protect the queen is because as we hear of all these things of, you know, whether it be soft girl era or healing girl era, all of those pieces are just really leading to that, like self-care, self-love. And for me, there was also this element of, you know, when the woman King dropped a, a couple of years ago um, of this royalty, right? Um, so just queen stuff. I've always been on my queen stuff. I'm usually the only woman in a hip hop show or in a cypher. So, you know, out of respect, other, you know, fellow MCs and male MCs, the, you know, they call me queen, things like that. So I love that. I've kind of held on to that. I even make my Apple watch. It calls me queen opal. Um, so I wanted to pull that like royal piece into it. And then that protective piece, of course, a, a play on chess, right? Um, but also really to just it's time to protect us. It's time to protect each other. And it's time to protect that feminine energy that is us as well. I am a probably forever tomboy, but there's always and also such a feminine energy about me that I want to protect and love. And I find that that energy doesn't get to live as much when we are striving and pushing for our dreams and all that. So I was like, all that kind of came together. And I was like, protect the queen. Like that, that piece came to me. Like, that's what I'm calling it. And so I write all the time. I write in my phone, I write in my notebooks, and I just really looked at all the pieces I had written lately. And there was just these different themes. And so much of it was just about like the femininity, the love, um, faith, all of those pieces came together. So those really fit with, uh, fit with Protect the Queen. So I was just like, yeah, okay, call it Protect the Queen. I had written, I don't even know how many pieces I had written. And then I had um, narrowed it down to like 32. There was like, yeah, the, these are what I'm feeling. These are the five. I recorded all of those, mixed those down, and then really narrowed it down um, to after, you know, sending out for mastering just 18 tracks that I was like, this fits. This fits that Queen stuff. And there are some noticeable tracks that I have shared elsewhere that I thought were going to be on this album, but they just didn't fit that Queen vibe. So I got... I got a whole mess of tracks ready for another album, but um, that's kind of how we got to protect the queen. And that's where we're at again. Welcome to those just joining. Thank you for rocking me on this live. Um, but we'll get into some of those tracks and I'll talk about those pieces. Um, I want to also talk about the cover. Um, so AI is just a huge thing. And I, like everybody else was like, let me go ahead and try this little AI art. And as I saw them come back, many of them came back as like, Again, kind of that little woman king warrior piece. And I was like, let me go ahead and let them kind of surround it. So when I look at that protect the queen, it's like all these different images and facets of self. 
protecting, you know, my essence, my soul, who I am. So that's kind of where the cover came from. And I also wanted to embrace AI. I know that when it comes to art and those other things, there can be so much that is challenged by AI. And I wanted to really lean into it and really kind of own it. So that's also like capturing of the times with that piece. I love art, real artists behind me um, that I've, the local artists and other folks um, that I am a fan of. So wanted to kind of incorporate that piece into it too. So let's get into it. Like I said, I'll pause and I'll talk about some things, but uh, let's get into this intro. What mission should you choose to accept is to protect the queen. It's music because I've got you rocking and swaying. With no drums, no kit, no saxophone playing. This is spoken word, free as a bird flow. This is hope and worth freeing my soul in a show of brilliant vocab and skill. This is free will in gift form. You think it's amazing, but it's my norm. Quiet storm on a sunny day. I didn't have an end, but I made a way. Sway. So my intro... Again, just kind of telling y'all, protect the queen piece. And I wanted to put that piece on there that just says it's music because I got you rocking and swaying because I made a conscious choice again not to have any music on my album. I did that with my first album, my first spoken word album. Uh, my name is Opal and there's no music on it. And I start the intro to that one says there's no music on this album. And everybody told me like not to do that. And I know and I have pieces like my, my uh, single Imagine, you can find that that's out everywhere, too. Shout out to Chris Crane, who did some beautiful music on there and some beautiful singing on there. Chris Crane is an amazing artist out of Milwaukee. Fabulous. Please look up that single. Look him up, too. Um, and this song was originally supposed to go on this. But I just again, I was like, you know what? No, I want to just voice. I want just voice again. And that's just I don't know, becoming my thing doesn't mean I won't do the other stuff because I love music. I still make hip hop, too. Um, but I kind of wanted to make that stance again that there's no music. This is just voice. I'm really trying to get people back to the art form and back to lyrics and back to hearing that stuff. So it's another reason that I kind of went a little bit hard on the intro there. Let's get into the next one. Um, Blue Moon. Blue Moon um, is one of those pieces where I feel like you definitely feel my MC come out, um, where I got um, some of those... Uh, wordplay going on in there and i really really love that for that reason blue is my favorite color but i really try to have the play on words you're pulling uh kid a jigga crypts of sigma all those things have blue um i'll let it play and then I'll, I'll hit one of my other pieces to see if folks folks caught what i was talking about in that this one is called blue moon i felt the moon staring at me turned to the window to see the bright light blaring at me but not glaring at me, it shone in epiphany. Midnight snack version of breakfast at Tiffany's, it was movie epic. In the literal, check it. You can't hide light under a bushel for nothing. And there's no future in fronting or singing backup if you do it too long. My too long was tonight, so I'm singing my song. Same track, new vocals. You can't think global and aim local. My name is Opal, gemstone full of fire and ice. Precious, I slay like sapphire when I write. I needed that push to remind me of my pull. Way too many tourists in the game running with that bull. I ended like a matador. My similes are a metaphor wrapped in an enigma. My frame of reference for blue ranges from crips to sigmas. Kid of jigger and student of the game with an indigo aura. Moon said, so I have a question for you. No quora, just the truth. What were you told in your youth about proof? That it's never circumstantial and it has to withstand. Moon questioned soul again. Then why'd you switch plans? The heavenly body shook hands, re-cementing the deal. Moon said, I had to get your attention by giving you something you can feel. Cold stare while you lived in vogue. It can quickly turn to crystal if you do what you're told. Don't fear being too old, it's all relative. But it's time you woke up from your sedative and got clear. I'm the buzz in your right and the beep in your left ear. Blue dot to make it clear. Now tell them what you hear. I've already brought the people near. And I think 
part of my favorite out of that one was like, I slay like Sapphire when I write because Sapphire, of course, the pull on blue there, but Sapphire wrote Push, which became the movie Precious. I mean, you know, we're, we're all in it. <laughs> we're all in it for that. So I, I love that piece. So I love to try to uncover stuff. And some wordplay, I definitely go for on purpose. Um, but then as any writer would tell you, some of that, like you don't even know until you hear it back and you're like, whoa, right? That's why I say that, that it'd be it'd be all God. And every creator knows that no matter what you do, if you're painting, if you're writing, if you're singing, there are just some parts where uh, I think Quincy Jones said, leave room for God to enter the room, always on those pieces. Um, let's get into the light. Um, the light is oh, and one of the few pieces that folks heard before the album. I, I also just like to have my my pieces and then like no one's heard them before they go. So there's always like this, like the day before the album drops for me, like I know no one's heard this. I know that I go deep. I tell way too much, probably a whole bunch of TMI in my rhymes because they're real and this one though is one that I have shared and it took me to, I would say I've been, have been blessed to be on some pretty cool stages, but this one I actually got to perform in DC at the National History Museum of African-American um, History and Culture on the Oprah Winfrey Theater stage. That to me like, boom, like Maxine Waters, I shared I shared a mic with her and, and she hugged me. This was like, you know what I mean? If, if, <laughs> if that was the top, thank you, Lord. You know what I'm saying? I wanna go further, but if that was the top, I'm more than blessed. So uh, I hope y'all enjoy the light. Blue moon. As the light glistens off glasses like chandeliers, I draw near to the essence of our brilliance. Nights like this, our hearts beat with resilience. Can you feel this anointing in the air? Hanging like a golden pear ripe for the harvest. What was once viewed as strange fruit has transformed into the marvelous, majestic majority. I challenge anyone who doesn't make us a priority to cordially stand back and let us through. From Shakespeare, much ado to Langston Hughes, no dreams deferred tonight. Nah, everything up until now was just an appetizer to get your palates right, so live your life. Paint with bold strokes and vivid hues. Listen to the whispers and follow the breadcrumbs and clues left by ancestors both here and gone. Dance like everyone's watching and sing your song for it won't be long that you are the light that led the way. But while we're here, the light in me sees the light in you. Namaste. So one, one of my favorite pieces and uh, that is very much in tune with, with what I do, very much in tune and happy Black History Month on that one too. Uh, I very much write from a social justice lens. Um, I am so in love with my culture, with our culture, with Black people. I'm so in love with our soul and I'm so disrupted by injustice and I'm so inspired by our plight and our triumph and how we just keep winning and shining. Um, that's the light, right? So I'm always celebrating that in my art. So that that one, um, that fits other stuff if you heard that I wrote for sure. Uh, I got a question though, which is awesome. Yes, please, please put your questions in, your comments in. Love to address those because this is a lot, lot of me talking and would love to hear from y'all too. Um, so someone says, can you please explain the purpose of the order of the album? Um, absolutely. So that, that takes a long time too. Let me tell y'all, um, for me, writing comes quick. Recording is fun and quick. Of course, you got to do some. Some take a lot of takes. Some don't. Um, but the order, mixing in the order is the longest thing to me. Um, so I just really wanted something that could flow. You'll notice on this one, I have a lot less like I'll call them interludes like I'm doing right now, like I'm explaining. I did a lot of that on the first album. So more experimenting with not doing that because I wanted something that could just play. Like I said, I want to give you 27. Give me 27 minutes of your time. Less than the average podcast. Just less than an episode of a sitcom, just put it on and drive, put it on and do the dishes, put it on and clean up. I just want to give you everything I got in 27 minutes. So the order, I'm glad you asked that question, was really important to me for that. So it just really had to flow. And I wanted to end, you'll see I end with winning. Um, I say I'm a little bit in my own mind, like Dr. Seuss, because I'm like the Lorax where everything I end with is like a positive thing, like unless, you know what I'm saying? Um, but it really just was um, peace of flow and then also warming you up, right? Because I do have some heavy hitting stuff and 
coming up soon. I got some really heavy hitting stuff, but I wanted to kind of kind of ease you in, welcome you in, warm you up, hit some heavy stuff and then take off and then and then send you off inspired. So that was that kind of led to the order, but it really is just the ear. Just listen to it over and over again. What flowed into the other pieces? And again, that was particularly um, challenging, I would say, with this piece, because I didn't do you can just let this play and you might think it's like one poem. I'm not saying in this like what, what was games thing? He did like 300 bars or something like he did like 300 bars. It's kind of like that where it's just going. Um, and so they had to fit. So I kind of fit the puzzle pieces. I had an idea, but I switched it up so many times. If you go on my Instagram, you'll see what I did um, is just like I typed all the titles out and then I cut them up into like little strips and then I kept moving them around. And then not only it was really the ear, but then I also wanted to look, how does it look when you read? How does it feel? So all of those pieces came together to, um, at least in my mind, it makes sense um, for the order. So that's where that's at. So speaking of that, we're about to get into comedians, and rappers. This is one of my favorites. I love them all, um, but this is one of my top two uh, comedians and rappers. I love, I absolutely love that uh, the Cat Williams stuff came out a few weeks ago. Of course, I had already written comedians and rappers, but I've always, like, I think, Folks that know me know that I'm very, you know, into my faith. Um, so, and I still, be I believe that prophets are here now as well. And so I'm kind of posing like, what if the prophets are the comedians and the rappers, right? Because I think we think that they're only going to show up in religious spots. And I, I'm like, no, they're going to show up in people who have the podium, who have the mic in some way. And when I think about, you know, Cat Williams, um, Dave Chappelle, Whoopi Goldberg, like those, they are hilarious and so brilliantly comedically genius, but they are also telling the truth on a level that just resonates, right? It just resonates so hard and they're so smart. And rappers, you know what I mean? Great rappers, MCs, they do the same thing. Um, Nas, Lauren Hill, like they take you there. They are speaking truth on a new level. So uh, let me stop talking so y'all can just listen to uh, comedians and rappers. One of my top two favorites off of this. I know where my time comes from. Say amen at the end. Amen. Okay. And I just always do that. <laughs> I think the prophets are the comedians and the rappers. The songwriters and photographers who can capture a thousand words in a picture or a painting. Start greeting the saints like you do the superstars by fainting. Falling back to collapse at the weight of it all. How many Allen Iversons didn't answer the call? Because they were afraid of it all to cross over and make their secular supernatural. God can have any plan he wants. That's actual and factual. So how radical is it to assume that these are biblical times? That these are stories of faith we are writing in these biblical rhymes? See, typically I'm more subtle, but this is blunt force. Trauma made me do it, so I'm a stunt more. What would I front for? What do I have to prove? I keep winning and winning, so what do I have to lose to get my point across by any means necessary? Derived from a lineage of kings, visionaries, it's hereditary. See, life isn't sedentary, but the truth is. Ooh. Oh, what a priestless confession of the booth is. I'm letting loose, kids. You about to see the wrath. Catherine Johnson telling my story. You're going to have to see the math parables so you can repeat the path and understand the lesson. It is what it is. Don't second guess the blessing. Hard times just testing whether you're real or not. Can't be afraid of the dark when you got the fear of God. So here's the rod, the staff, they comfort me. He said he closed the Red Sea if they ever come for me. Well fed, but I'm spitting hungry, G. I come from good genes, not talking about your dungarees. And honestly, you suckers is dumb, dumb to me. See, science makes sense, but so does creation and evolution. Every ass and I pray to God that there's no problem in Houston. Thanks. Rocket boosting at the speed of light. Still feel your heart melt with the sweet sound of silent night. I, I'm getting deeper now. I'll hit you back up when you wake up. This was just a sleep around. <laughs> 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 you like, burr, burr, burr. But yeah, that's y'all. Y'all can tell. I, I don't even. I don't even have to. Yeah, I don't have to tell you how much I love that one. Um, I, I just really believe that. I feel that. Um, one of my favorite lines I think to date is, "Oh, what a priestless confessional the booth is." I mean. That's what I said. I tell y'all too much. I tell y'all too much. But when I get in the booth on the mic, I really don't care. I'm just saying the best thing I can say that is also true. I don't care if it's embarrassing. I don't care if it hurts your feelings. You know, I'm not doing any hate speech, of course. But uh, yeah. Oh, what a priest this confession of the booth is. That That's my that's my line right there. But I digress. Uh, as I said, the order that someone asked. It gets you into it to get you a little bit heavier. So we starting to get heavy now. And this one is is probably... 
the heaviest piece on here. Um, yeah, too many young lives taken. Um, self-explanatory. I, I just, I just saw too that, uh, in the past three years, um, suicide for black men has doubled, doubled, right? Um, yeah, there's so much with that, right? Um, I, I've seen so much, I've felt so much, you know, within our community, within the world and, yeah, some things that just don't fit in my head or they they play on my emotions so hard, I've got to write it to get it out of me. And, and this is one of these pieces. Um, for those who don't know me, um, my undergrad is in psychology. Um, so, you know, mental illness is something that I, I know is something that needs help. I believe in psychology. I believe in that power. Um, but I also know, you know, I see and witness that pain on both sides. So I had, I had to speak on it, had to write on it. So Protect the queen also means as a queen, shout out and protect those who who need it too. So this is protecting all of us and protecting those queens um, who need that too. Too many young lives taken. They out here breaking their own hearts, taking themselves out of their own part, meant for growth and development. Whether or not times is hard is irrelevant. Let me tell them that times ain't that hard. Not so hard you need to leave. But we need to know what you're lacking so we can help reprieve. Believe, we've been on similar roads, let's travel. Pulled ties that left our lives unraveled. Half the battle is waking up the next day. Stronger than the last or even wearier in the best way. So press play and finish the movie and the credits. You think you're the only one? I dare you to check Reddit. I bet it's dozens facing the same issue. When did we start handing out meds instead of tissues? that smelled like grandma's purse. Funny the things we associate with a hearse. But what's worse than thinking the future is more bleak than your present depression? I feel like we gave our kids technological advances, but no lessons. So stressing and button pressing is all we pass down. Mm. Us so busy trying to build a legacy and they just want us around. But we're nowhere to be found and they succumb. Us left with no one to pass it down to and fully numb. But the loss of life not going on pains us like no other. Even if it's not ours, the loss of another young brother loved by his mother and still put in the ground. He smiles in every picture, a beautiful boy. Had all the right moves, but rage masqueraded as joy. Is now seen through like a veil. Bold saying black lives matter, but their own lives pale. They can't see their value and they don't know their worth. Overlay that with comparison to perfect AI curated work. No wonder they want to leave this in search for something real. Why is death the only thing giving them something they can feel? Surreal and in vogue with. We try so hard to keep them, but what do we leave them alone with? What component of society is to blame? What element of the collective can we name that is so divisive that it sacrifices hope? Words on a page yet leaving no note. Leave you hanging no rope. This is how I cope. Can't really leave it at that. Bold saying black lives matter, but they own lives pale. I mean, and this is how I cope. I write this out. And you notice that that piece was more questions than anything else. And you'll hear anger in that. You'll hear sadness in that. You'll hear just not understanding. You'll hear why in that. Um, because that's that's how we that's how we feel. That's how we feel when we're faced with those things. Um, so I digress. I let the piece speak for it. Uh this one is called um, Beauty in the Vase. Um, there's so much in vases and the symbolism in that. Um, there's so much beauty in flowers. So I, I let this speak one speak for itself too. Also, going back to the order, there was some death on that. Now we're going into some life again. Give me my flowers while I'm above ground. Let me float on the notes and the buzz of their sounds. Let earth mother me so when the world tries to other me, I am utterly so deep in the folds of her arms that I know I belong before they tell me. See, there's nothing they can sell me that will make me glow like my melanin or flow like my estrogen. See, I think some souls have never been in love like this before. Hugging the skin you are in just a little bit more as to embrace and face all negative space, the power of sunshine and rain, beauty, 
in a vase. Speaks for itself, speaks for itself. Um, I got another question. Uh, they say, I don't know if you touched on it, but what is your favorite track on the album? My favorite track is Shut Up. <laughs> And I try not to say what my favorite one is um, before at least some folks who know me and friends have like listened to it once it's come out. And it was so cool that um, Shut Up resonated with a lot of people. So we will get into Shut Up. I said like the end hard. So it's like the fourth to last one on the album. But Shut Up is my favorite. Um, ironically, I talk a whole bunch. Shut Up is my favorite. So speaking of that, let's get into the next piece. Uh, Dear Femininity, if you were tuned in earlier... I kind of touched on why I named it Protect the Queen and some of that had to do with calling out that femininity as the world is also shifting into this more feminine power era, into soft girl era, heal, healed girl era, whatever you want to call it. We are centering our womanness. We are still going and getting it. We are still being bosses. We are still strong as we want to be. We are still trying to do everything men can do, but in our own ways, in our own lanes. But we're getting back to understanding the value and the beauty of being in our femininity. And it's so ironic because that word is so hard for me to say. <laughs> but <laughs> you hear it a little come out in the poem. I shouldn't have said that because that's not all what y'all going to hear. But um, femininity is just something that is just this beautiful additional power. Like I said, I am a tomboy for life, most likely. But I'm also such a damn girl. Like if you go into my closet, it's like two sides. It's like hella sneakers and then it's like evening gowns and heels it's like like i love so much my toiletries my all my stuff right i'm such a girl um and i love to center and honor that but i'm also such a tomboy and i also think in my head that i'm gangster and i'm a boss and everything you got to tell yourself to do what you got to do um so dear femininity is saying um i know where you're at i love that you're coming back to me a little bit um and i'm gonna think about your power in the same way i thought about my other power so i digress dear femininity this one is called Dear Femininity. Oof. Y'all gotta rock me on this one. Thanks. And Dear Femininity, I've been scared to put you on. I mean, you make me feel like a natural woman in that song and that's never been wrong, but the last time I danced in you, I fell. And I'm grateful for the stories I can tell, but I've done so well decentering your power. These last few years, days, hours, without more than mere glimpses of your touch on my life. I've been more than all right. I've been winning at life, handling strife and pain like a G. And in full transparency, that is me. Thanks. But I'm also the softest landing imagined. Thanks. Forced to move through this world damaged, hiding her because to be seen is to be wanted. And if I'm being real, I'm still haunted by ghosts of lovers past. I don't want my last to be my last, but I'm really past this vast wilderness of rebirth, past the childbirth of women's work and this woman's worth has shot away from love. Fiercely driven by all of the above, pushed to shove, tossed and battered, wondering if I ever really mattered, just opposed to wearing the crown. That it never touched the ground, never lost. I've been found that I'm the prize. Mm. Not what's between my thighs, but behind eyes, my soul burns free. If you strip all armor off of me, you would see curves for days. And supple of pinks and golds. My future holds future goals of a safe space to strut my vulnerability. Thanks for taking me back and never leaving me. My dear femininity. That's that. That's one of those pieces where I give a little bit of TMI. It's almost hard to listen in front of y'all, but that's what I do. <laughs> I tell my business to rhythm and rhyme for joy. That's what I do. Uh, got a cool question in here. It says, what piece do you think people need to hear the most right now? I think too many young lives taken is a big one. I'm looking at my, my track list here. Home of the BIPOC is huge. Um, if you are any sort of creator, if you are any sort of entrepreneur, if you are any sort of dreamer, you need to hear shut up, like straight up. Uh, but I've talked about shut up enough. Um, I don't know. I, I, I love them all. But yeah, I think um, I think too many young lives taken. People absolutely need to hear that right now. Um, and yeah, that, that would be the one. That would be the one. Good question. Good question. 
All right. Um, getting the AI. I told y'all about the cover and AI and all those pieces. And so um, we'll play on everything in AI. So uh, let this one go for y'all. This one is called AI. AI thinks I'm pretty, so I'm cool with it. I understand that most folks won't know what to do with it. But since cool like that, I've been to go with the flow type. I heard you drown faster when you're struggling. I'm pro-life. Not to limit the choice is kind, but the breathe as long as you can. Survival of the fittest, can I get an amen? Amy. So I plan to fan the flame, not extinguish. Mm. So I'm a necessary part of the algorithm and not diminished Thanks. or erased. Something like Brill and enemy of the state. Where there's a will, there's a way. Mm. Take these tools and create. Yep, yep. Instead of Rembrandt and Picasso, we're given a blank slate. There's new rules to this paint and no lines to stay within. What's real and what's not has become subjective. Now your muse doesn't live until you create them. Then you keep remixing the palette that you use to shade them until beauty leaves the eye of the beholder and becomes the beheld. Nothing new under the sun, so I wish the artist well. And time will tell. O.E. AI. Yeah, so uh, AI, I don't know if y'all heard like the shout out, like I love Enemy of the State. And I know I talked, to, I've said this and heard a lot of people say the same, like whenever Enemy of the State is on TV, like I'm watching it. Like I don't care if it's in the middle, the beginning, the end, I'm watching it. And I never thought that Brill got enough. Never thought that Brill got enough. That was uh, the, the older white man, Lisa um, Bonet's mentor and father, father his her father's friend, but who kind of saved Will and showed him how to do it. So I thought about like, and he was like, if they're big, you're small. If they're slow, you're fast, right? And he used all their tools against them. So that's that's what I'm kind of bringing in and, and helping people change their minds and think about AI in that way um, to use it. Because it can be helpful it, there. I think there's a fine line with everything. Um, not right. No rhymes with AI, but as far as making some art, we all use Canva. I mean, the, all of those things are in that. So I wanted to kind of have a little bit of embrace for AI and then play on words with the A and the I, right? Like I peep it. A, I see what's going on with this thing. Here I am. But before I go down that rabbit hole, let me answer this question <laughs> that I see come in here. Uh, it says, I have listened to the album multiple times. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Love you for that. Um, and I want to know if I'm going to be able to hear these pieces performed live sometime in the near future. I would say yes, absolutely. Um, if you're going to be in D.C., I will be performing um, some stuff out there March 5th, I do believe, back at the um, National uh, Museum of African-American uh, History and Culture, back on the Oprah Winfrey stage. Won't he do it? Yes, he will. Uh, I'm also available, um, as my website says, for in-person and virtual performances all the time. So I'm always doing stuff. Check my website. It's opalalisa.com, O-P-A-L. E-L-L-Y-S-E. -L -L -E. If you scroll down on the homepage just a little bit, a little thumb swipe, you'll be able to see um, performances. I always try to keep those up to date of what's coming up. Um, that being said, you can also bring me in um, for anything that you're doing, again, virtual or in person. Um, I can accommodate both of those really well. Uh, I'm doing something um, for work later this month, so that's there. Um, yeah, I think those are the things that I have coming up. I've also got, um, in Chicago, I will be in Chicago. That's not till June, but I'm doing, um, a young professional summit there and I'll be performing some pieces. I will be reading some pieces and have, um, some books and, and journals and things like that, um, for, for purchase as well. So stay on the website. You'll be able to see all of the stuff that I'm doing. Um, and I'm trying to do more stuff like this, more lives and things like that. So do subscribe to this YouTube channel too. Um, shameless plug, needed plug. Um, so you can be up to date on those too, because I'll be doing um, performances from here. But yeah, they, they pop up, especially with Black History Month. Like, trust me, somebody gonna call me and be somebody gonna call me on 10th and be like, can you do something on the 11th? And I'm be like, sure. <laughs> so that's always how it is. I'm usually very busy Black History Month, Women's History Month following um, in March. And since I'm a Black female artist, um, I get I get a lot of those pieces. So you'll see that come up. Some of a lot of the stuff that I do is more private events. So you won't always see that stuff posted. But um, it, I will kind of share after the fact. Um, but a lot of my stuff that's public. I, I welcome you all to as well. Um, and my website is O-P-A-L-E-L-L-Y-S-E dot com, Opalalisa dot com. You can just like it says on the bottom of the screen at Opalalisa. You can find me on every single social media as well. All right. Let's get into um. The differences. 
One dances in the room while the other simply enters. The difference between storytellers and pretenders. One takes you on a journey to enrich your inner vision. The other keeps you from it, encasing you in an inner prison. Listen, discernment is a prerequisite for greatness. Why do we keep putting ourselves on the wait list? Mm. I hate this tendency we have to back burner us. What could be more important than our wealth, health, self-love? We've been dealt cards that we are specifically designed to play. But we see others not playing with a full deck and think that the solution is to give part of our hands away and stray from our own brilliant fate. What if we were worth the wait? Mm. And the difference a day can make is the joy that cometh in the morning. Preach. The destiny restoring factor that allows us to shine. Who owns the light on the horizon if this world were mine? That one really is, you know, protecting the queen. The difference is, right? Like giving our hands away, not centering our self-love because we're so made to take care of others, but making sure that we're also understanding that we are also made to take care of ourselves. That love that we give everyone else, we can give ourselves to. That time we give everyone else, we can give ourselves to. That prioritization that we give everything else and everyone else, we can give to us too. And I'm still learning this. I'm not I'm not on some pedestal saying it. No, I am also, I'm talking to myself first and foremost in every single round that I speak. Um, but that's kind of how difference is to me to fit in um, to this Protect the Queen album. Uh, next piece is I paint sunsets and sunrise. I paint sunsets at sunrise. Uh, for those of you who don't, I don't know if anybody knows this. I am in love with the sky. Absolutely in love with the sky. I have been like that since I was a small child for as long as I can remember. Uh, I remember being a very small child and I would just sit on my porch and just look up at the sky <clears throat> and not just like, you know, the regular stuff you do where you're like, oh, this cloud looks like a dinosaur. Like, nah, like I've always had like a connection. Like when I look at the sky, like me and God are like having some sort of communication. So I'm very in love with the sky. So I'm also like many folks, I think dawn is so beautiful. I think the sunsets are so beautiful. So I get in a little bit in blue moon too. And I'm, I'm trying to share that. But like when I wake up, I'm looking at the sky before I go to bed. Um, I have windows in my closet. Um, I love my closet. I'm the second favorite room. This is my first favorite room. Um, but my closet has these huge windows on, on two of the walls. And um, it's, we're kind of like, we're, we're not out in the country, but we're kind of a little ways out. And when I tell you, it is just black with the most beautiful stars. And I like last night, I was just last night. I think I'd be texting my mom. I was like, Oh, Orion's belt just looks amazing. But that, that me, me and God talk like that. We, we talk through, somehow we talk through vision and, and the sky. So I digress. <laughs> Sunsets at sunrise is just additionally, um, my love, my love for God, my love for the sky. Um, and it's love back to me. So sunsets at sunrise. I paint sunsets at sunrise. The joy of feeling God's glory through my eyes at my size, incomparable to his. Still, we fit and are married in this bliss. I fall in love with the colors. I'm a visual lover. No other causes me to close my eyes and see the beauty better. The peace touches my body and we belong together in a kind of forever that exists beyond time, a world beyond worlds across an imaginary line that by design is meant to separate the here from the now. Yet somehow we vow to unite the two. When God asks, I do. Been through so much just to stand at his side. He carried me and footprints don't lie and neither will I to my soul. Funny how the real power comes when we let go of control and just roll with the waves of our destiny. Fly without wings on pure alchemy, trusting the love of our lives and our dreams. As the sun starts to set, I'm reminded, I beam. Like I said, I'm in love with the sky. I'm in love with God. That That's just how it has always been. And that's how it's going to always be. Um, I love that. And that is a, a lot of information, which is super, super cool um, that the comment here says, I admire your ability to be able to share your storytelling with the world. I'm not as confident to do so and have stories, but I'm just scared to share them. So first of all, 
I love that. Um, second of all, uh, like I said, I still am like, oh my gosh, did I just share all of that when something, when I'm about to release something, um, I'm the same way as when I finally hit enter or send, or, you know, it hits midnight when, when your stuff comes out where I'm like, oh my gosh, like, <laughs> like hide me, close the laptop. Um, so I I'm glad that it looks like confidence. Um, but it's something that, that I work at, um, and the other piece is just, I love to create so much. I love to create so much. And I, the only way I can create is to just tell the truth, right? Tell the truth in my rhymes, what I really feel. And so that just gives me that piece. And I guess um, I've been doing it for a long time. Like I said, I started in hip hop. I've been rapping and rhyming and, and speaking stuff for a long, long time. So at this point, it's like, I didn't say it at all. Um, I think one of the, this reminds me like one of the coolest things that happened, I think last year, was I had wrote a verse like somebody asked me to to hop on um hop on their song um like like you know like we always do like a collab all the time so somebody asked me to hop on their song this was 15 years ago they asked me to hop on their song so I recorded the verse sent it their way they're like I like it I love it let's go um but as things occur that never came out do you know that they put that on an album that they released this year late in 2023 and I could still stand by those lyrics. Like I was still like, hell yes, this song is still fire. I love it. And I was just really proud that I didn't have to be like, oh no, you can't, you can't release that. I said that, I said that when I was in my twenties, <laughs> that's not ringing true now. Um, but since I've always told the truth in my rhymes and I've always been true to self, I don't have any of those rhymes where I'm like, yeah, we can't do that. Now there may be some profanity in past rhymes that I may not bring into rhymes today. I may. But there's nothing about what I'm saying, right? Nothing was ever hate. It was always love. Nothing was ever weak. It was always strong, right? So I love that piece. And I think that's that's where that confidence comes from, true, that like, you know, everybody now is like, I'm going to stand on business. Like, I can stand on my rhyme. So I digress. But that's that's where the, that's where the confidence comes from. And just doing it so many times. Like, you're, you're I'm always still scared before I do something. I was nervous before. And I was like, oh, gosh, here we go. Um, <laughs> but here we are. And then the next time is going to be easier. So Everyone has stories. I'm a firm believer of that. I believe everybody should write a book. I believe everyone should follow their passions and share those stories. Let them come and start start just saying them, right? Record them. Don't let nobody hear them if that's the case. Or record them and share them with the world, but don't put it on, you know, your social media. Make a whole other account where no one knows you and put it out there and see what happens, right? And I always say that, like, you think everybody's looking at your social media, ain't nobody looking at it. So you never know. But Get, get the muster up the courage, go to an open mic night where nobody knows your name or your face and share those stories. Cause you have those stories for a reason. Uh, I truly believe God put that in you for a reason. So get to the point where you can share them. Um, and it really does come repetition gives you comfort, but I have yet to meet someone, even people who do things for professionally, it's only their job. They, they still get butterflies. Um, they still get a little nervous about like, dang, I said that. Yeah, you did. And as long as it's true, you'll be able to stand on it 15 years later and longer. So I digress. I digress. I don't want to keep y'all too, too long. We got some more to get through. Um, I closed my eyes on a plane. This one, uh, I literally did. I closed my eyes on a plane. Um, some tears came out. It was just tears of joy. Um, it was coming back from, it wasn't the, the DC piece, um, but it was another, it was coming from Atlanta and I was coming back on the plane. I love the trip to Atlanta, by the way. It's only two hours. And um, I happened to be in first class. And I had just left a conference where I I just was able to shine and, and in my speaking engagements and the other things that I did there. And, you know, I just kind of put my head back to kind of relax and like like tears of joy just came streaming out. So that's what uh that's what I wrote this one about. And I wrote it on the plane, too. As soon as I stopped crying like a baby, I, you know, wiped my eyes and I wrote it in my phone. This one's called, I closed my eyes on a plane. And I wrote this in the air, however many thousands of feet. Yes, I didn't tell you that. Like most of my stuff. I closed my eyes on a plane and let the pain leave my being. Through a bed of tears, I shut, I was seeing the beauty of my life and time. How blessed am I to write these rhymes and recite these lines that become my story? When I think about all the goodness of God and all he's done for me, the glory can't be contained. That is why I cry without being pained. I remained shut to the world, but 
open to mine. This encounter was truly divine, and I find that oftentimes I hold more than I can carry. I live in brave because I'm afraid of the scary. The very thought of some things leave me weak. But when I face those fears, I get a peek of what it is to live as my best self. A warrior stealth yet emboldened. I've been living my life like it's golden, beholden to no one but my source, my creator, my God, so I won't force, but merely allow. I surrender all. I ride the waves of an ocean created by my tears. I vow to live lighter years with heavy impact. God, how many times have you kept me intact for moments just like this? So my structure could hold all the joy and bliss I missed, forgetting to enjoy my answered prayers for longer than a rejoice. Mm. You made me, designed me to uplift with voice. So I rest in the quiet and I bask in your love. Father God, thank you for holding me close as I ride the skies above with love. So I think one of the, the things that just hits me in that one too is like, I think especially when we're ambitious or we're even if we're in a, a season of winning or a season of anything, like we forget to pause and enjoy some of those things. And I think for me, um, often when I'm on planes, like it's the only time that I slow the hell down. Like when I'm on a plane, there's nothing I can do for anyone hitting my phone. There's nothing I can do. I just am sitting and I'm just, again, I told you I'm in love with the sky. I'm looking at the sky. Those are those times when I pause and I really get to think about how good God is and how amazing it is. Um, for those of you who know me, I have very humble beginnings. So sometimes I'm like, damn, like, th like this is what I've been able to do. Um, this is the life I get to live. And I really think God wants us to take more of those moments, right? He gives us these things and these spots and these places and this growth so we can be in that, right? And I think sometimes we, I know I forget to pause. So that that was kind of that. Because when I actually paused, it was nothing but tears of joy streaming out of my eyes. So I digress, I digress. Uh, someone has a question about how long did it take you to make this album? So I have been writing the things that hit this album. Um, I always write. So I always write. I think probably the oldest, I don't know. The oldest one is maybe a year or two ago, maybe. Um, some of them that didn't make it were some of the older ones. And those were, those were the, those were the times. So I was like, this was a protect the queen theme. So there were, there are probably going to be some resistance type album that I dropped really soon with some of those that didn't get on this album. Um, so a lot of those were some of those early ones. So I write them all, all the time. So writing, you know, over a span of maybe a year or two, um, and, but it doesn't typically take me too long to write. Usually when I, when it's hit, when it hits me, I start writing, I get almost the whole thing done. And maybe like two to four of the last lines, they take me a while for me to wrap it up. Um, and then recording, I went ham on this. I work a lot. For those who don't know, I work, I work in corporate America. I work a lot. Okay, so I don't have much time. Um, I do take time off over Christmas. I love me some Christmas. And I take a good amount of time off at the end of the year. I take I take those last two weeks of the year. And um, if I can, I take the first week of the new year. I just take that time because I, I go really hard. And so then I take that time off. And so... Um, I had originally wanted to drop this in November. So I had been like, I recorded a couple of them, but then when I got that time off, I was just like, forget it. So I probably recorded the bulk of this in a week. Um, and then it takes me a couple, couple, couple weeks to mix probably. Um, and then I send them off for mastering weight here and back and kind of go back and forth with that. Um, so if it was all done in one, it probably took six to eight weeks. Um, since it wasn't, I've been working on this album for the better part of 2023. So doesn't really answer your question, but that's where it's at. Good question, though. Um, yeah, let's go into what is so. I'll just say happy Black History Month on this one. True story. What is so? Soul be defined by the absence of limitation to physical form. Soul be the in-between the lines that define cultural norm. Soul can be seen painting a portrait of a thousand words, but never captured. Soul is the slap on my knee to accompany my laughter. Soul is what connects me to you. Despite the differences we've been through, see, soul be tried and true. Soul can make you happy even singing the blues. Soul is the wink of my right eye and the fire in my left. 
Soul is the tender loving care underwritten with respect, no regrets. Soul is a dream once deferred but twice lived. Soul is a legacy we pass down to our kids. Soul mm. is more than words over an acoustic guitar. Soul is Maya Angelou telling us how phenomenal we are. Soul is the essence of our ebony hues. It's the pen of Langston Hughes. It's Audre Lord telling the truth. Whoop. It's not looking like what we've been through. Soul Damn. is you and I lifting as we climb because a soul tie is a ribbon in the sky that represents so much. Soul will overload your senses with just one touch. So feel the rush and remember it's the culture for us. Lots of shout outs to uh, the other artists, the change makers, um, the taste makers, the black amazing geniuses who have come before me um, and still are. Um, so yeah, what is soul is just all about that. Um, also in inspired by some folks that I that I work with too. So I digress, but yeah, that, that's what is soul. So Black History Month, bump that what is soul. Go ahead and share that on your pages, okay? Um, let's get into this love. Like I said. I'm in love with God. Someone asked me a um, performance I had Sunday before last um, at UCC Church. Shout out to UCC Church. If you are from there tuning in, thank you. I love y'all. Y'all filled my cup more than you will ever know. That was a fabulous, fabulous um, time to share my piece and then also really talk about um, art, love, God, and discussion. And one of the questions asked for me was, as I'm writing this new album, because this was about to come out, what are the themes? And I was like, when I look back, it was like so much of the things were love and God. Um, and you'll hear a couple of references. Um, this is this um, that last piece was the second poem I have on this album that gave a little nod to um, Love Jones um, with the, you know, the, the wink in your left thigh. Right. So I did it with eyes and I did it with ears um, to kind of take you into the senses, sensual senses in a different way. Um, I also you'll hear in Vogue's giving you something he can feel. I'm also letting that kind of go through that. So those are the kind of the patterns and stuff that I, I've seen come up. Um, but yeah, let's get into this love. Now, let me share this love with you. Shakespeare flow much ado about nothing or something. If faith is the evidence of things not seen, heavy is the crown of a queen who knows her worth. Been seeking God since birth. Praise be Allah, word to Jah. Love, blessings, and favor. Taste and see that the Lord is good and dare to savor more than the salt of the earth before we meet our sweet by and by. Dare to give new interpretation of an eye for an eye. Dare we become we as a body made up of many members, melting pot warm by the embers who refuse to be put out by the ways of this world. Mm. Take my belief for naivety because you don't believe in the brevity of our time here. Mm. I know it's on purpose that I'm here. So while I'm here and have the ear, I won't water it down or sugarcoat it. Mm -hmm. I'm devoted. I know where my talent comes from. I plug in and I write. I would rather be righteous than right. I'm bright, but my light is not my own. Knew the truth before I was grown. It has been shown that a child shall lead them. Compared to a shepherd's flock and he will feed them, lead them into what is real. That's why my whole life I've just been giving them something he can feel. Lately, I've been thinking about my choices. Go right into choice. And what voices I followed. I've been winning. I'm successful. But sometimes I feel hollowed out by the winds that are losses in disguise. I've been smart AF from jump, but that ain't always wise. Look into my eyes and tell me I was supposed to be solo. I don't have a fear of missing out, but it's FOMO. Fear of my own. Life is real now and I'm grown. Everyone knows my name, but have I ever been known? Not in the biblical sense, but straight biblical text. Love isn't impatient. Love is kind. Love doesn't envy, but my mind can't help but wander to loves that could have been. Legacies unwritten and me fighting with a ring. Swinging a miss on love, but a home run on life. Married to the game. I've always been a wife. Facts on facts. Like I said, I like to give the, the two sides of it. So there's this love, but then there's choices, right? Because there's so much. Um, so I'll let y'all sit with those and, and digest those. Um, so uh, now I'm going to get into my favorite piece, which has been asked before. Um Shut up. <laughs> I, lo I love shut up. I love the name shut up. I don't know why. It just feels a little, feels a little, I don't know. I love it. Um, yeah. 
And the thing I love about Shut Up too is uh, I, I do write and perform in different, like, I don't want this to be sound too weird, but different personalities. Different personalities of me come out on different pieces. And so I hear them in my head when I write it. And so I also do that on, on, on the mic when I'm recording it. So uh, yeah, Shut Up is a part of me that, that I love. So here you go. Shut up. Stop telling folks your business. Contrary to popular belief, you do not need a witness to get this blessing. Them witnesses are not the type to bring testimony, they bring stressing. And not everyone is worthy of your confessing. Watch this, watch this. I'm addressing an unseen issue with clarity. The key to the door with mad prosperity is locked in silence. And I'm talking silence that won't even succumb to violence. That would rather die than be told prematurely. Cause you got big things that will be born too small if given over too early. Facts. See, everyone is not your friend. Facts again. And you're not gonna like this, but in the end, it's just you, your talents, and God. Mm. Spoil the gift and feel the rod. Hit hard beyond the physical. Your life isn't supposed to be typical. You're alive to be pivotal in the advancement of your assignment. But you can't focus when everyone is offsetting your alignment. You're designed with sights set on a specific measure. The book of life less like a roll call and more like a leisure. Thanks. So you better prioritize your worth. There was a balance shift at the moment of your birth. And you deserve to enjoy these fruits. But when you're not around good ground, you destroy your own roots and help pollute the world with their fear. I need everyone who hath an ear to hear what the church is saying to the people. Listen. Hear me when I say you were not created equal. You are the sequel. And if you can't step into the next alone, you will be responsible for all you postpone. Mm. And your spot on the throne given to those who could carry the weight of the crown. God don't care how many people you let down. You've been given the blueprint. Now run this town. And don't dumb this down so the slow ones can get it. I need your crossover to break some ankles when you pivot. Don't get upset, get livid. Life isn't an effing scrimmage. It's a privilege. And you'd like to curse it with your words. Mm. You'd rather be a master of destruction than write a verse and keep it tucked in until the right time. But I heard the devil likes to fight you in the nighttime because it's dark. Mm. And here you are, afraid to let your light shine because it might spark more than you intended. But what if your inferno was exactly what God commanded? We overshare because we're scared. We want someone with us when we dare. But destiny is a solo sport. Ooh. Picture Serena alone on the court with all the force and grace needed to conquer. I love you and I trust you, her only mantra. So guard your heart and shut your mouth. That's how you shut down fear and shut out doubt. Shut up. Sin. Shut up. That That's my John right there. <laughs> like I said, I love, that's my favorite piece. Um, I see a comment. Um, I've struggled with telling the truth too much and it hurt me um, in the end. So this piece really speaks to me. Me too. I have absolutely told my dreams to people who were dream killers. Um, and then that slowed me up or messed me up or made me doubt myself too much. Um, I've told people stuff too early, right? I've said something and then didn't do the action. And I've watched someone else pick it up, right? Um, you got to have discernment when it comes to what, what you're doing. And some stuff is just between you and God. Some stuff is just between, you know, you and you or a small select. You can't, there's so much power in words. I very much believe words have power. Um, and not everybody is ready for what you got. Your vision is your vision is your own. If you're truly a visionary, you're going to do something that people ain't going to be ready for for a long while. I just told y'all it took me, you know, all of 23 at least to, to, to make this make this album. And I've been writing stuff since this, at least 2022. Um, it wasn't ready to talk about it. You can ask some of my best friends. They didn't know what this album was called. <laughs> 
<laughs> you can ask them. But I love my friends and they love me. And I trust that they wouldn't do anything mal with it. But I just knew some stuff I got to keep close to the heart. Right. Um, so, yeah, shut up like about so much. Right. And that doesn't mean don't have testimonies. Don't go tell. Don't rejoice. Don't share. Do all that to encourage. But especially when something's early or you're still making something. Shut up. That that's that's my word. That's my advice. I'm 44 years old. I've been here a minute. Shut up. Okay. Um, so I, I digress. We're almost done. I got three more tracks. Um, this is home of the BIPOC, is the next one you're gonna hear. Uh this this um piece I actually have performed before. I did this through um uh forward theater. Shouts out to forward theater. They picked me for one of the monologue um pieces um in 2022. I want to say it was 22. Um, and uh, I got to do this piece six shows in a row. Well, let me tell you, I have so much respect for people who do the theater because it is live. It is a big old audience and it's being recorded and you can't mess up. OK. And not only do you have to think about what you're going to say, you got to think about how you move. You got to think about where your feet are. And my biggest fear was I was going to trip coming out there. <laughs> but I did not. <laughs> I did not that one time. God was good the whole time. And I was able to slay all six performances. But there is a, whew, I have so much respect for people who do this theater. Um, I love this piece for um, a couple reasons. One, because it has made me an official playwright. So I have that. I'm a super multi hyphenate. Um, so I can add that to the list. The other piece is, um, shout out to Dana. Um, she was my director um, for this piece. So she really taught me some things and she she is she is a, a a theater you know genius and that is that is her gift one of her gifts and what she does um and she was able to just like just like make it a performance and she taught me so much so much that I've taken with me into other places so shouts out to her um she is amazing just amazing um and you know I'm an artist and I'm sensitive about my stuff and she was so amazing on how she was able to still direct me and bring some things out and pour some things into me so that was also new because I just write my stuff and I practice it and I practice it and I perform it and that was like I wrote my stuff and I submitted it and it got selected and now I have a director who's going to direct me about my stuff so it was also learning to move in that space and it was great it was amazing um, and not everybody can do that so again shouts out to Dana she's talented as hell and and made this piece better so home of the BIPOC since landing here they have done all they could to strip you of what is rightfully yours tell me how someone could land on any of your shores and think that this beautiful body wasn't already in a relationship with a people who loved and cared for her just because they came in ships and thought that they could claim her didn't even know who she was yet they tried to rename her and when they saw you, they tried to rename you too. Having no idea what you and she, her and hers had already been through. And no matter what they did to her, she would always love the way you held her sacred. Mm. You had seen each other naked and trembled in awe. I can only imagine what those virgin eyes saw. When the nation was raped with violence, Penetration of evil followed by silence, weaponized invisibility to deny your very existence, unaware of her ability to build up a resistance to their self-absorbed poison, causing them to be barren as she had already chosen to love the first who touched her soul. She's not a cursed land, she's a mother, whole, in waiting for the return of her love. Your story and my story, told under the same sky above see living in a black body i can recognize indigenous pain however this is not my story to tell and oh. we are not one in the same but so closely intertwined thanks the home they took me to was not mine the land they took from you is not theirs in disbelief we watch as they pass it down to their heirs as i bear witness to your injustice i add my voice to yours May we never, ever grow silent about the violence that happened on American shores. I mean, self-explanatory. Home of the BIPOC, okay? Um, yeah, yeah. Huge shouts out again to Forward Theater and Dana for that piece. But you can tell, okay? That was directed, right? <laughs> that was directed. And I took that with me. Um, you, you feel the anger. You feel the everything up in that. Um, and I had to super get out of my comfort zone, too. So, shouts out to her. Making me better. Um, second to last one, 
looking for a bomb. And I said, I have a little bit of personalities in this one. And when they come out, this one, I don't know why. It was like Cookie Taraji B. Hansen, <laughs> P. Hansen in this one. So uh, looking for a bomb again with that healing arrow with the protect the queen. Like there's so much going on. What if we had a bomb that could just protect us and heal us from what has already harmed us when we weren't protected? Um, so that's looking for a bomb. I'm looking for a bomb. You know, suck my palm and rub on my arm that will calm me so that I can shield me from the real me and hold me. Because mama told me there'd be days like this, you know, where ignorance is bliss because I could use some of that. Seems like the darker times get, the more the news start to flash. Getting my precise attention. Wait, did I forget to mention that I'm allergic to a lot? So if that bomb you got contains anything artificial, superficial or unofficial, that won't work. And I swear I'm not trying to be a jerk, but if it's not locally sourced, it won't reach my particular pain. And it needs to be waterproof so it won't wash off in the rain or leave a stain on my armor. Because that's what I've been thus far to save my skin. Mm. But I've come to realize that if I'm really going to win, I need something that can go within and protect me. See, I have in the past had this tendency to neglect me and then expect me to show up perfect. And I'm not going to take you down the path today on whether or not I deserve it, but I'm worth it. So, hey, uh, what's it going to cost me? I just really feel cookie on that. <laughs> but I digress. I digress. One question uh, that I skipped over, forgive me. Um, did you do this album all yourself? Uh, pretty much did. Yes. Um, so, I, of course, write anything you hear me spit, I've written. I write on my rhymes. Um I, you know, do, do the process that most writers do. You go and you, you say them and you say them and they get better. You do the editing. Uh, I do record myself. I'm blessed to have great equipment. I've got my studio prayer room, which I'm in right now, and I have a beautiful booth. Um, so I record myself. And then um, I have, you know, taught myself to mix by learning from great um, engineers who have had the pleasure to be around since I was in college, I've been going to studios and having people mix stuff. And if you know anything about that, you go and you sit and you record. And then it's like, you know, you watch a mix. <laughs> At least I did. Um, and ask those questions. I've also taken some courses on mixing. Um, not an engineer. I hate the mixing. I shouldn't say I hate. I just like the mixing process. I'm very grateful I can do it, though, because especially with spoken word. Now, I don't mix my own music. I'll tell you that right now. I probably probably could, but I wouldn't as much because that's a lot more complicated. But when it comes to just my voice, I'm, I'm able to do that for spoken word. So um, I mix it myself. I do um, have someone else master it, though, just because to get another ear on it, to get someone who's got those skills that are higher than mine. Um, I, I give them a really good mix and then then um, um, then I get it mastered. So that's the only part of it that I don't do. I do own a publishing company. So I publish it. It goes out to all the streaming services. I collect my royalties and all of those things um, and the cover um, and all the album art. I love doing that stuff. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. It's one woman shop right here. You dig? You dig. Um, so I digress. The last piece we are here. Thank you for hanging with me. I said eight to nine, but we went a little bit over. Thank you for rocking with me. If you still are, thank you for rocking with me, period. Because again, y'all could have been anywhere. Um, very much appreciate you checking this out and listening, listening to me. Um, so winning, winning is the last piece. And, uh, you know, this is some queen ish. You feel me? This is some queen. -ish. So we can't do that and not talk about winning. Um, we we got to toot our horns sometimes. And especially as women, I think we've been taught that that's not cute. But you know what? Yes, it is. If it's true, it's not what they say. It's not bragging if it's true. Um, but then again, when it looks like you're winning, it, people think you've always been winning. And this this piece is really about when you <laughs> real life. OK, because for every height you see me at, there was a low too, and uh, Life ebbs and flows. You're at the mountaintop, then you're in the valley, then you're back in the mountaintop. And that's just how life is. You're moving forward, though. Um, so uh, this piece is called Winnie that, that reminds people and reminds me of when I wasn't and how I was when I felt I wasn't and vice versa, how you can feel like you're winning, but maybe you're not. But I digress. This is this is ending on that Lorex note, unless end on a high note, winning. If it feels like I keep winning, I do. But don't hate me now because I've paid my due. Where were you when I was broke crying to a job that paid nothing? Hmm. Feeling like a whole failure. There was no future, no fronting. Holding faith that God said I should want for nothing. And now I don't. Thanks. You think it's all been sweet? Well, let's take a vote because I can quote my own bitterness, but I won't. 
because words have power. I was speaking light into my darkest hours, Thanks. affirmation of wealth while in poverty, Thanks. holding on to God's unfailing sovereignty, believing for better and that it was around the corner and God would spin the block. He did, God did, but not holding a Glock. Instead, holding a clock reminding me that his timing isn't ours. Mm. One of his many superpowers is making us believe in improbable dreams. That the world makes feel impossible while our insecurities scream, no! And our spirit screams, let's go. And I don't care if it looks crazy. This is your moment, baby, so don't fret. Anytime you wager in favor of yourself, it's a winning bet. That's all I can say. Anytime you wager in favor of yourself, it is a winning bet. I'm a firm believer uh, we don't believe in ourselves enough. We doubt ourselves so much. We shut down our intuition and I just don't want that for us anymore. So, um, I digress. Thank you all for rocking with me, uh, for hanging with me all this time. I absolutely appreciate it. It has been, um, fun for me, um, a new thing, um, for me as well. Um, so super It's trying to come back. Back like we never left. <laughs> we didn't think we were not going to have any technical difficulties, did we? We got pretty far without having those technical difficulties. But I was just wrapping up anyways, just to say thank you for tuning in. Thank you for supporting the work that I do. I appreciate it more than you will ever, ever know. Um, and you know, that's what we're here for. So again, please subscribe if you haven't already, um, go ahead and, um, follow me on, um, Instagram on, um, I'm still calling this Twitter, but X, um, connect with me on Facebook if you haven't already. Um, the other piece, I'm not my, my, one of the people I look up to very much, Deanna Singh. She's an amazing author, speaker. Um, she owns and runs Uplifting Impact. Uh, she told me all the time, pro tip, have your book. So <laughs> if you haven't already, this is my first book, my first poetry book. This is called My Name is Opal. It is, um, based off of it's where I first started doing books because it was like based off of like people would ask me all the time when I do performances oh can I get a copy of that to have it in writing so they could like absorb it and I was like let me make a book, make a book for that um my amazing daughter is the illustrator on this you can see I mean we got full beautiful color pages up in here of some of her artwork um that she has done that you're able to check out so you know do do check out my name is Opal this is available on Amazon or at opalalisa.com 
I just recently, oh, I've been busy. I told you I take them, I take them a couple weeks off at the end of the day. I've been busy. This is my brand new dream and color dream journal. Um, this is not just a notebook. Um, this is actually like an activity book for your dreams to help you recall your dreams, remember your dreams, find elements, spot patterns. I have been recording my dreams for years. Um, it's something that my mom always taught me was important that we learn from our dreams. Um, and then, like I said, I have a psych degree and learning how dreams help us process, can help us process information. I also believe it's heavily tied to faith. God um, shows me so much in dreams. We, we save ourselves in dreams. We learn things in our dreams. So do check my dream and color dream journal. Um, and I actually took that picture too, um, leaving Toronto on a plane. Um, so you can get this on Amazon, also on opalalisa.com. Get it wherever makes sense for you, okay? Um, and then finally, I've been wanting to do this forever. I did a line of notebooks. Now these are actually notebooks. Um, they are just blank line notebooks. I do have a nice um, inscription in the front, but they are notebooks. This one right on theme with the protected queen. This is queens aren't made; they are born. Right? Are we in publishing? Like I said, these are and these are all inspired by the works that I do in my spoken word. Um, this is also from Reclaiming My Time. This says, I believe we are underinvested in ourselves. Another line journal. I Dream in Color, one of the most popular pieces off of My Name is Opal book. Uh, Violets, one of my favorite pieces off of that also. So you can support your girl in many, many ways. Um, if you are a writer, though, um, these are notebooks designed by a writer. I use them. OK. And if you are a dreamer, this is designed by me. I use everything I know from psychology, everything I know from recording dr my dreams all my life. Um, and I also have a really good memory. So I have some clues and cues in here on how to better remember your dreams, if that's a challenge for you, uh, because I'm really good at that. And I can I can I can share that. I'm going to share that with the world. So I use this, too. I used to just use notebook. I've been using notebooks forever, but I actually since I made this, I started using these, this, and it is phenomenal. There's even a space for you to draw because sometimes we can see things, but we can't really articulate it. I have on one of my vision boards. Yes, I'm that type of person. One of my vision boards has um, an image that I drew from a dream that uh, absolutely has come true. And it continues to be a symbol for me. So I digress. Check it out. The book started it all. My name is Opal. Yes, there will be a Protect the Queen book. Of course. Okay. Look for it. National Poetry Month in April. But I digress. Thank you all so much for kicking it with me. Um, someone says, I'm excited for what you will be bringing to us. Oh, yeah. I I'm always creating. Like I said, I have um, the cuts that didn't make this album. And I'm probably going to have a very social justice themed album. I may still drop it like this year. Like I it, it may be like a August, September drop for me just because they're ready. They're recorded, they're mixed, they're mastered. And um, I know that I'll write some in between. This being an election year, this being the year it's been, I'm sure that I'll be inspired to add some more to that. So uh, yeah, you'll get another album from me soon. In the meantime, um, enjoy Protect the Queen. Um, I won't say too much more because like I said, shut up. You know what I'm saying? I don't I don't give it all away, but there'll be very cool things. So please keep checking for me. I also want to do more lives like this and then do a lot of giveaways too. So I will say this, if you tuned into this live and you watch this, um, hit me up on Instagram or Facebook or Twitter, whatever you're fancy. And, uh, tell me, I'm trying to think of what something I could think that you had to watch to know. Tell me, um, tell me what my favorite piece is. And I will send you a free notebook of your choice. You ain't gonna get the dream journal for free. You gotta go ahead and get that. But I'll give you a free notebook of your choice. I will send it free shipping. I will send it to you. Um, tell me what my favorite piece out this album is, and I will mail you one of these. Just say, hey, I watched your live listening party. You know, hype me up. Say you loved it, even if you didn't. <laughs> Lie to me. Um, but uh, I'll send you a free. I'll send you a free notebook if you can tell me what my favorite piece is. Comment, make a comment under one of my last posts that I've made. Any protect, you can do it on any protect the queen post. Say what I said my favorite one was, and that you watched this live, and I'll send you a notebook. So that's my word. I love y'all. This was fun. Expect more of this. Um, let's keep let's keep rocking. And if you are a creator, let me know. I will show up and support in any way that I can, because that's just that's how we roll. Okay, that's how we roll. Love, blessings, and favor. Thank y'all so much. Continue the mission. You got one mission, and that is to protect the queen. That's my word. Thank you.